Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this edition, we'll be reviewing the latest sequential shifter from the guys at SG Racing, keeping the robust build solution of their previously reviewed shifters and adding some more throw, a ball plunger element with more tactile feedback, also sporting some magnet activated reed switches. Time to put this shifter through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Let's take a closer look at this SG Racing sequential shifter. Now this is called the Pro, and it's the top of the line. It's also called Black because everything is black or done in black as far as, as, far as the anodization is concerned. So yeah, it all looks very good as far as the finish goes on this shifter when you take it out of the box. And it's a what I would call a full-size shifter. What I mean by that is, or a full-size control that it feels very authentic as far as the sizing and the feel of it when you have it mounted to your cockpit as far as a real control in a real car would feel which adds to the immersion obviously instead of having just a little small sequential shifter that you're moving back and forth very quickly even though those get the job done also depends on what you want out of your simulation yeah so it's a well-built piece here it comes in at about two pounds and 11 ounces so it has a good weight to it i think 1.2 kilos also on for everybody else in the world that's what this weighs so again it has a good in-hand feel when you take it out of the box and i think it presents well with the stylings that they've done on this you can actually get some custom pieces done or custom work done when you have yours ordered if you want things like plaques or different colors i even saw one that was purple and the customer wanted that to match something that they had that they were going to put it in maybe their motor or the interior of their car or something and what I mean by the engraving plates or logos, they put my logo actually on this one, on this plate here. And this is all engraved. So it's actually cut into the metal. It's not silk screened or anything like that. And the same thing with the SG logo over here. Let's talk about some dimensions. This is 340 millimeters tall from up here at the top of the handle down to the bottom of this mount plate where it contacts my blue mat. The lever itself is 15 millimeters thick. And this is all CNC billet aluminum 6061 that this is built out of. These are built like tanks. They're very, very solid builds. And I always said that on any of the review I've done on the SG Racing stuff. They do a good job with this assembly. They've never changed the, basically how they're doing this. And I don't blame them because it works. You might as well not change it if it's doing a good job. So 15 millimeters thick here. We have some cuts in here for holes to give it some styling. And they've left the silver rings around there again to give it some styling the same thing is going on with our lever up here you can see the little beveling they've done on there for our little switch the side plates are eight millimeters thick for each side that supports all the internals the end plates that support or spread those i call them spreader plates because they're spread, making space here along with this guy here and those are actually 10 millimeters thick and again all this is bolted together with stainless steel hardware everything has a hole and then it's tapped for thread so there's no nuts hanging on one side or the other very nice the bottom plate itself is six millimeters thick and it has some m8 holes in it and this is how i'll be mounting it too pretty simple to mount these things so this is a big nut on here what's this big nut doing on here well if you notice when we're actually actioning this the pivot point is here and we have two spacers in there they look like they're nylon probably have some kind of uh, lubrication impregnated to, or put onto them so feels pretty good actually and, but the bolt here is for a ball bearing plunger setup this is an 18 millimeter stainless steel bolt it has a set screw inside of it you can see right there and on the other side of the set screw is a spring and a ball bearing now there is a groove in this plate here it's almost well how you can see this i might have to do a look inside on this and pull it apart show you a better portion of what's going on here but it's hard to see it there's actually a groove down in here that the ball is riding in a little indentation see where my thing is there pointer so that's actually in the indentation that runs along the side in an arc on the plate itself so the ball bearing comes out of the set screw back here and it goes along that channel. 
But when it comes back into the set screw, the hollow part of that set screw, it pops back in. At least that's what it looks like it's doing to me when I'm looking straight down here, even though I, there's just no way for me really to demonstrate what's going on there under the lights. I don't know if you can see the ball bearing. Mm, maybe. If you look down in here, you can see where the sides of it are inside of here. I'm a pointer, right? You can see the silver down in there. That's where the ball bearings are on either side of this. There's not meant to be, I think, a tension adjustment on this. This is just a way to maintain it, take it out, lube it up, or whatever. However you can do that. But yeah, I don't think this is something that you can tighten up, because I tried to tighten up with a wrench. It's already tight. There's, there's actually a stud coming out here, it looks like to me, that this is going on. It looks like a set screw, but it could be a stud. Again, you have to take this apart to really figure out what's going on here. But end of the day, it does give you some pretty good action, I think, from, at least on the bench. Once we get it mounted to our car and we're driving in anger, then we'll be able to tell more about it. But yeah, I like what it feels like now, especially compared to the original one that I got and then the one after that that came with a sequential shifter and the handbrake combination. That one felt better than the original. I still have the original over here. And this is based on a switch design. Now, this one is also switches, but they're reed switches. So it's more of a hall effect action going on here. And a good way to see it, this is embedded down in here, but it's better just to try to see it if I can get a light on it. It's hard to see if I can't get the right angle. But inside of here, there's a hole. You see a little hole right there? You know, across the hole is a magnet mounted to our little lever, our neutral switch lever, or reverse lever, whatever you want to use it for. And inside of there is a little reed switch hiding. And again, you might be able to see some of it. I don't know. It's hard for me to see on this little monitor. But it's in there. And a reed switch, it's also a mechanical switch. But it's in a tube, and you have two pieces of metal either resting on each other, and the magnet pulls them apart, to break the contact and then it causes obviously the signal to be sent down to our board over here and convert it into a shift over to the PC or some of them are designed where they actually have a little gap in them and when you put the magnet close gets close enough the magnet field affects that it closes the gap and sends the signal so there's two different ways I've seen them used as far as implemented in, in different ways so I'm not sure exactly how this one's working we also have those reed switches down in here and this is a little bit of threaded, it looks like plastic, feels like plastic, it's not steel. So, and that's probably a good idea if you're trying to use a Hall Effect, <laughs> you only steel in there. Again, it's not very easy to see it, but again, I might do a look inside on this, pull it all apart, after I've done driving, of course, and see how that's working in there. But we have a magnet way down here on the lever, that's what, I think you can see it better on this side, because we don't have a little cable management piece there. But on our lever here that goes down here, remember this is the pivot. So down on the bottom here, we have a magnet down there. See that magnet? Let's see where I'm pointing, right? There we go. There's a magnet right in there on the lever. Right there. So when that magnet gets close to the reed switch that's sticking in this tube, then obviously it actions the reed switch and we get a shift. And that's how it works. Very simple. So it's contactless sort of, but we're still making contact inside the reed switch itself. But it doesn't make clicking noises like a switch does. But we do have a clicking noise because of the ball bearing that's riding in our channel in there and returning when we pull the shifter. So again, pretty good action, I feel like, on the bench anyway. But we'll have to see when we get there. Now this one, just use an example, it has the switches in it. Now you can get these shifters still with the switches, the micro switches, or you can get it with the reed switches. And it's the same cost, and that's what I've been told by SG Racing. So it doesn't matter as far as how much it costs, you just get a different way. So these are switches, and they're gonna make a clicking noise. Now remember, this is the original shifter. None of them are made this way. They're all made with the ball bearing plungers set up now, so they're all doing this as far as the action. But this was the original one that didn't have that kind of action. Didn't move very far, actually, to make this thing work. So I'm gonna, you can hear the the switch in there, right? So again, that's a little bit of noise on the switch, but I, it doesn't bother me. It depends on what you want. I'm not exactly sure which one I would choose as long as I had this action. That's what I like about it. 
is they've changed the action now, this new design, and this is what they're going with now moving forward from what I understand. So yeah, I like what they've done as far as improvements of the original design, but also have kept the, some things the same so that, yeah, this is, still feels very, very solid in hand. All right, anything else we wanna talk about here? Well, we've got our cord coming out here. Obviously we got three different cords for three different sensors. And we have a board in here that we'll take a look at later on. It is obviously a conversion board for the signaling so we can convert it to USB. The USB, which is compact, and there used to be a system like this that came out with the switches and you had a, I think that's a 15 pin DIN switch plug there that went into another plug or to the box itself. Can't remember exactly how that was set up, but now it's all together. And I'm gonna take this apart real quick. Main thing that I'm concerned about when I get peripherals for shifting or whatever, handbrake, you name it, I wanna make sure I got enough USB cable. Nothing substantially sticking out on this cable here. There's no ferrite cores on it or anything like that. Just seems to be regular USB cable quality, if you will. It has the USB-A fitting there that goes into the PC, obviously. And this looks to be about, I'm kinda of just testing it here. I would say this is about two meters long which should be enough for me. And I have a more of a length requirement for my peripherals than most people do because of the motion rig I'm running and, and everything's further away. The PC is further away to clear the swinging and motion of the system itself. So yeah, it is a, a concern as far as length. So it's always better to have more though than not have enough. Coming up short is not what you wanna do when you spend your hard earned money on something like this. Again, full size shifter. You can't go wrong, I think, if you're looking for a full-size shifter to go with something like this because it is more convincing. In fact, people run this shifter in real race cars. There's a, they sent me a video of a guy that's in a drifting competition. I think it's a BMW. And he uses this sequential shifter in his drifting car. So there you go. You don't get much more street cred than that, I think, in a shifter. And it has an overall good feel to it. Again, this is very subjective. Some people might not agree with that, and I always like to point that out, that we're all a little different. And just because I like something, doesn't mean that you're gonna like it too, right? I can only just put it through the process, show you guys as much information as I can, and let you make your own mind up, basically. So, what we'll do now is go ahead and get this mounted. As I said previously, we have a M8 hole here and here. I've already got some profiles mounted on my main shifting 4080 profile on the P1X that's over on my rig. And we'll bolt it to that with just, again, M8 bolts, some T-nuts in the channels, and then we'll be ready to go. So when we come back, we'll see how that went. Here's a look at the mounting solution I'll be using for testing the SG Racing Sequential Shifter. And you can see it's a pretty simple setup here. It has 40 series profiles mounted to a 4080 profile that is the stock mount for a P1X cockpit. And these are about 100 millimeters long each. I use this system a lot for mounting shifters. I have a pretty heavy duty corner bracket, gusseted corner bracket on each side, eight millimeter bolts and T-nuts and on both sides. And of course, this is a very stiff setup once you bolt everything down tightly. And like I said in the other sections that I was gonna be using this M8 bolt here, I have some black ones that I used that went into the hole no problem. The one up front, there is one caveat to the one mounting on front. This little beauty cap here, little plastic piece that goes on this nut to make things look nice, gets in the way of this when you're putting it in, this M8 bolt. So, and that's a socket cap head. It might not get in the way if I was using like a button head or something like that, but I wanted to use these. So anyway, you have to take this off to install it. No big deal. And all you have to do is come in and it should push right back on and it clears the bolt when you do that. There we have it. So no issues there. Just some very basic, quick cable management here, running it down the side of the cockpit and over to the computer. Plenty of cable, by the way, to get to my powered hub that I have down there. You can see the blue lights. So everything looks good. Now, when I'm actually handling this, as it's obviously nice and stiffly mounted now, it feels pretty good. It has a, a nice sound to it. And of course, being mounted all metal like this, it is gonna be not quiet <laughs> is a good way to put it. But I do like to throw, so far I got it in the seat already and tested it out. 
I do like the feel of the throw. It feels like you're really doing something with this shifter, I think. And of course, you know, that's subjective. Some people might want some more tension or less, but I think it's just about right for what I need to do with it. So what we're gonna do now is the fun stuff. We get to jump in and start driving it, see what we think about it. Now let's take a look inside of this SG racing shifter. Now I took some plates off. I left it partially assembled because it, I think it presents better that way and I can explain things a little better. And we took some plates off. I took the bottom mounting plate off and you can see it has the countersunk holes here, the four of them there. And then we have the holes that we use for actually mounting. And you can see it's a little, got a little bit of scratching on the anodization here. That is gonna be typical though. You know, this always happens with anodization when we start mounting things and we really bolt them down tightly. And you can see we've got a little bit of marking where I had the M8 bolts on the mount. But six millimeters thick, billet aluminum, 6061. Nice piece. The side panel that I took off over here, also a very nice piece, eight millimeters thick. It, we saw before in the closer look. And this also gives me an opportunity to show you the slot that has a radius on it that is cut into this plate that allows the bolt, and we'll talk about that in a second, that they have in the bottom of that shifter lever to follow this channel. So it gets sandwiched in between there. And we also have a threaded hole here, this big one, and that is for this assembly here. And this is a big nut. This is actually a 17 millimeter, I believe, nut. And we have a set screw inside of it. I'll go ahead and take that apart. All stainless steel hardware, very nice. See this big flange nut there. And this is the set screw with the ball bearing in it. It has a spring behind it. So that gives us the spring action. I can push this a little bit. It's pretty stiff, which I do like. I can push this a little bit, but not a whole lot with your finger. Of course, once we have the mechanical advantage of the assembly together, you can push it past that not without any issues. But yeah, I like the way this is done. Simple, effective, easy to replace these parts if we need to work on it. Something goes bad or breaks or wears out, whatever the case may be. So the shifter handle itself, again, very nicely done here with the knurling. It gives you a good grip. Now the anodization does take some of the sharpness of the grip away. I have the other shifter that feels just a little bit sharper on the knurling. Not sharp enough to cut yourself, obviously, but for the grip. A little bit more grip feel to it. Not that this doesn't have any grip, but it's just a difference that I like to mention. So the silver one's going to have a little more grip than the one that comes with black anodized. So it's really subjective as far as what you want. Now, Let's take a look at the assembly itself and how it works. And of course we have this huge 15 millimeter thick aluminum billet piece that gets cut out for the lever. Very nice, very strong. And yeah, you'll, you'll never wear that out, I don't think. And we have the, again, the spring lever up here. I didn't take that off. I didn't really see a reason why to take that off. And I did pull all the sensors off, the little reed switches that are in here. And we'll talk more about reed switches later on. And yeah, very solid assembly, as you can see. These are 10 millimeter thick pieces here, eight millimeter here. Of course, just like the plate that we've already taken off, the 10 millimeter pieces are these big blocks here that are supporting the spring assembly that gives us the tension when we're pushing against the spring and then release it. So when we're pushing or pulling, let's go this way. I'm gonna try to support this. I don't want it to pop off, so I'm kind of leaning against it this way when I'm doing this, but you can watch the springs, how they're working there. When I'm pulling this, so you can hear that snap as this button head on the other side right here snaps away from the ball that's in our set screw, right? So that's that snap that you're hearing. It's kind of supported here. And you can see how the spring is being compressed one way or the other. In this case, it's being compressed that way because I'm pulling the lever this way. I have it reversed because I took one side off instead of the other. <laughs> but yeah, pretty simple the way this is working. You can see there's a washer down here that's supporting that part. And we have a washer over here. We have two washers on this side. And I would imagine that's because of some spacing requirements for the tension that the manufacturer wanted to put on these springs themselves. Now, they don't have any optional springs as far as I know. I talked to them. They just don't offer them. I think it's pretty good tension all around, though. In my driving segment, if you watch that, it's, I was really happy with the way this thing felt. And I like the tactile feedback that we were getting from this button head bolt here. And that's all that is. You can see it actually has the hex 
wrench size, or I forget what that is. I think it's a six millimeter. And yeah, it's a very nice stainless steel piece. All this, by the way, all the hardware here is stainless steel. I've checked with a magnet. I think these are steel though, these pieces here. But the, the bolts themselves are nice stainless steel units. So yeah, we have the magnet over here and we have a magnet over here. We see it a lot better now that we have it disassembled, obviously, than we did in the closer look. Pretty simple the way this is working, very effective. And I like simple but effective because that means this should have a long life cycle, I would imagine. There's not a lot to go wrong here, except maybe later on the, the spring wears out or gets tired and you can just put another spring in there. The main pivot bolt here, this is an M4 hex head bolt for the size if you're going to take this off. And you can see the, the shoulder on that bolt coming out right there. So when we put the other plate on, the plate is actually being supported on the shoulder. The threads are just coming out through the other side. So that means we have all the pressure from this lever riding on this on a nice steel rod, smooth steel rod, which is the shoulder of this bolt. So nylon washer here to keep things rolling smooth. I thought that might be impregnated with some lube or something, but it's just a nylon washer, I think. At the end of the day, I think that's all this is. So, yeah, a very effective design here, I think. I really can't find anything to complain about. The build is robust, as you can see. This thing should last a long time as far as the mechanical assembly goes. As far as switches, be it a reed switch or a micro switch or whatever, you know, that's a different thing. That's the electronic element of this package. So, I don't know about you guys, but I like what I'm seeing here. This is really well done. And the other ones that I reviewed before from SG Racing are quite similar, except this one has the longest throw of them all, which is finally where I would prefer to have it. The first one was very limited with the micro switches I showed you in the closer look if you saw that. This has much better throw for a tactile feedback sensation. And of course, now that they put this plunger ball system in here with the, the way that it rotates and clicks in and out with that spring pressure from our ball over here, yeah, it really has a good feel to it when I'm driving it. I really had no complaints. I could live with a sequential shifter. It feels like this. It may be, I would want maybe a, a stiffer spring here, but I could actually take this apart and put another washer in here that would preload the spring and make it stiffer. But then I don't know if the rest of the design of the package is made to handle the extra stiffness, but I, I would think it would, because this is, like I said, this is a robust build here, guys. There's really, yeah, nothing lightweight on here that I could see it would easy be easy to break. Even the neutral lever feels quite solid, I think. The way it's, it's just got a bolt going through it. I don't there's no bearing or anything in there, just a sleeve, but yet yeah, it works fine. I didn't have any issues when I was actually manipulating it or actioning it. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing here in this assembly. I don't know about you guys, but I do. And everything is held together as far as the side plates with these M4 stainless steel socket head caps with washers. So again, the hardware is very good everywhere we look here. I think it's well executed. So really not much else to show you here on the look inside. Just wanted to let you guys see internally how this is all working and coming together. Now let's take a look inside of the controller box or how we are converting the signals from our read switches in the shifter itself or micro switches for that matter if we had micro switches in it into a USB signal that our PC can interpret. And not much to see here, really. This is a, it looks like a little injection molded box. It's not 3D printed. Here is the lid for it. Very simple little design here. It does have countersunk holes in the lid, and we're using some coarse screws here. And, of course, that's so it will bite into the plastic that's in here. And it's still attached, so I'm just going to kind of spin it around so you guys can see what's going on here with it. <laughs> Let me if I lift it up like this. There we go. That's better. And what we have in here, I'm going to go ahead and just take it out of the slot. There's a little slot here that will keep this plug that's on this teensy board from coming through. And it's kind of like a, a, a pressure relief or stress relief segment or component here of this box itself. And we have, you can see our board here where we have our soldering done. And we have mostly done on the bottom. We have one on the top. I'm going to flip this around so we can take a better look at it. And it's a pro micro board. I can do this without messing anything up. Of course, I could fix it if I did anything bad, I suppose. 
and you can see there it's um, you can see it's pro micro so it's a programmable board you can use Arduino or something like that to write some firmware to it so it does what what you want it to do and it even shows like your logo things like that when it comes into the Windows game controller settings very simply done here if you'll notice and this is not easy to do with it attached, but I certainly don't want to <laughs> take everything apart. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work if I take the USB off either. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. So there we go. So it's not stressing it anyway. All right, so if you notice, we've got some wires here going. Most of them are going to one side, and we have a black one, which is a ground, going to the other side because there's a ground there on that other line of pads that we can solder to. If you notice, there's a white one in there too. We have three reds, and the reds are the signal part of the read switches. So they're going to signal pads. And the white, and you'll see a white and a black one on that same row. The white one's a ground, and the black one's a ground. And the reason there's a white one in there is I had a read switch go bad on me on the shifter, and the manufacturer sent me another one, and I was able to put it on there. But we'll talk more about that in the read switch uh, issue that I had. Yeah, it's... Just one of those things with the read switches or really any mechanical switch that can go wrong and you have to replace it. So again, we'll discuss that in another segment that I'm going to do especially for the shifter. So yeah, not a lot to see here the way this is done. This is done a lot around the sim racing world as far as converting regular signaling so that we can convert it to a USB and send it over to the PC. So there you have it. That's the look inside for the controller box and we'll go ahead and get to our next segment. So let's discuss these read switches. Now I actually had a couple of these go bad on me. And I replaced them, but it's not a user serviceable part. And I'll discuss that at the end of this, I think. I just want to show you how this stuff works and what the problem is. First off, these are obviously read switches, which is a mechanical switch. It is consists of some metal pieces, two pieces of metal there. I'm going to try to zoom in here and show you guys what's going on here. I can get a good enough focus. There we go. So you can see two pieces of metal. See that? Let me, if I can keep it in focus. There's two pieces of metal in that tube. There's a glass tube, two pieces of metal. And the magnet either pulls them apart or pulls them together, depending on the orientation. When you order them, you can get them in either way. They can manufacture them both ways. So, But sometimes they can stick. Because in the end of the day, this is still a mechanical switch even though we're using a magnetic field to make it work. So that's what it looks like. And I'll show you. I got them separated here on the bench. I'm trying to demonstrate. We'll zoom back out here so you can see what's going on. I have the USB conversion board already powered up over here, as you can see. And everything's connected. You got a red power light. We have two green indicators. You'll see those flash. And also have the SG Shifter Pro properties up for game controllers in Windows. So we can see the little red balls light up when they light up. You can see one's actually lit up already. <laughs> so that's because it's stuck and I've been playing around with them. So the idea here is, I'm not sure which one that is that's stuck, is I'm simulating the magnet on the lever, the shifter lever, with this magnet, rare earth magnet. And the idea is to get this close enough that activates the switch. So I think that is number two, yeah. So that didn't activate it because it's already on. Now I may be able to use the magnetic field here around this magnet to get it to come back off. But you see it kind of jumps up because the metal wires here are affecting it as far as the magnet. Here we go. See how it's, it's moving now? Now I turned it off I moved by moving the magnet slowly away. Now it's off. But when I move the magnet back on and turn it on, see, it, it stays on. It's, it's flashing around, intermittent, and that's what's happening on the lever. The magnet is getting close and then coming back off like that. So now it's working right there. That's how it will. <laughs> it was working. So it, it works, but it doesn't work. So in a race, obviously, this inconsistency is not what you want. So I had to replace that one, and I placed another one too. Now, the one in the middle here, I think one of these is working properly. So I'm going to take the magnet and kind of push it towards that one and see if it activates. There we go. And it is going to be a little bit variable. This is not the best way to test this because it's, you know, it's not set in the lever. So the, the distance is, is precise every time because I have my, this magnet in my hand. It's a little bit variable. So, yeah, this is, um, okay. 
but it just gives you an idea what's going on. So that it would stick on is the problem. I think this one may have been the one that we didn't have any problems with. No, it stuck on too. So again, the whole idea is you don't want it to, to remain on as the magnet moves away. And this one seems to be working best of all. Yeah, it's very sensitive. You can see I have to get pretty far away to make it not work. So that's how they work. So I had some that were sticking. And that was the issue. So I had to replace them. Now this is not what I would call a user serviceable. Let me depower or unpower my board here because I don't want to cause any problems. You can see I have it on my blue anti-static mat. So yeah, this is, I call all, all these boards TNC boards, but they're not. Some are manufactured by different people, but they're the same thing. They take the signal and convert it to USB so we can use it in our PCs. So these have little teeny pads on them, solder pads. So as you can see, this is not something that's what I would consider even close to being user serviceable for most people because, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to do that. So if you have a problem like this, you would have to send it back to the manufacturer. I have a lot of experience with electronics and doing soldering as one of my other hobbies is, and I'll just pan over so you can, I just finished a build actually over here, is these little FPV quadcopters. And you do a lot of soldering on these guys to make things work. Right, so you can see I got motor wire soldered on a bottom board over there. I've got a receiver in there that's got soldering on it. And we've got a controller board that has other things going on. So I do a lot of soldering to do this. And these are little little quads that we use goggles that when we wear the goggles, we can actually see what we're, what's going on and how we're flying through this camera lens. It's very cool. If you never tried it, I highly suggest you do because it's a lot of fun. This is not a drone or what I would call a drone because it's not autonomous. It doesn't go fly on its own somewhere or return to home, although you can make them do that if you want, but I never do that. I just fly them manually, basically. So anyway, if you've got a lot of experience, and of course you need the proper equipment to do that, which I also have, which makes it a lot easier. This, again, I would not consider this to be a user serviceable part. So after discussing the situation with SG Racing, they sent me a couple of sensors, obviously, and I replaced them. And if you saw the closer look in the controller board, you'll see I had one that had a white ground wire, and that was just one of the sensors they sent me to get things working. And I saw it, resoldered it and all that stuff, the usual stuff when you deal with electronics and you're trying to replace a part. So that got everything working fine. When I was discussing it with them, I was thinking, you know, well, you might want to go with something else. Even though they told me they had like 20 or so of these shifters out there that haven't had any problems or reported problems yet on these read switches. But I had two go bad on me, so yeah, that's not very good, even though you can get that in a batch of switches when you buy them. I mean, there's no guarantees on any of this stuff, obviously. So, but it worked on the bench when I was doing my closer look fine. There was no issues. I got it, once I got it mounted and was using it, then I ran into some issues after a while. So just bad switches. And now I have it working fine. But after discussing this with them, again, my point is they're no longer going to be manufacturing the shifter with these sensors in there. Okay? No more read switches. And what they're going, in fact, they were already developing a different magnetic solution, a true Hall effect sensor. And these are little integrated circuits that you can put inside these tubes where they're putting, you can see where he's using this threaded tube here, where he put his read switch. And you put the little integrated circuit at the end of there and run your wires through it, obviously. And now we have an integrated circuit doing the read switches job, which is turning on and off, which is a true, what I would call a true Hall effect solution. Not just a contactless, but uh, it was also a contactless, but yeah, it's a Hall effect. So that's gonna be a much more robust solution, I think, because we've taken all the mechanical out of the equation. And yeah, so they'll be using those once they get that finished as far as the development on that. And they're not gonna be manufacturing these read switches anymore as far as the solution for switching inside their switches or inside their shifters rather. So that's a good thing. Identifying a problem that can occur to other users out there. Again, that's one of the things I like to do here at the SRG and see if the manufacturer, you know, what their take is on it and what they're going to be doing moving forward. So it's a good sign that SG Racing is ready to move away from these potential problems. And if I was going to order a shifter today, I would get one with the micro switches, the manual, you know, the regular switches. And, you know, they're easy to replace. They're a lot less finicky than these re-switches are in magnetic fields. So, yeah, I would go with micro switches 
and just be done with it because everything else is the same on the shifters as i said before the throw on the shifter is the same the feet mechanical feel of the shifter is the same it's just we're using micro switches instead of these reed switches over here and in the future i'm not sure how far in this into the future they're going to be having a true hall effect solution which is obviously i think the end game solution for a lot of controls that we use in sim racing or controls that you use in everyday life too so anyway there it is. We had some switches go bad. I replaced the switches, got it back up and running, and was able to do all my driving segments and run it for, actually, put some hours on it once I had it fixed and didn't have any problems after that. But it's just kind of like anything can go bad, and I just want to report this to make sure you guys are aware of this and also aware of they're no longer going to be manufacturing the read switch solution into their sequential shifters. We're in iRacing at Sebring, and we're in the Ford Mustang Super V8 car. And this is a great car to drive with a sequential shifter. Obviously, they have sequential shifters in those cars. And yeah, the immersion obviously gets a lot deeper when you have a full-size control like this and using a sequential. So first off, this thing is built very, very stiffly, very sturdy, as you saw in the closer look. If you watch that segment, it's a very well put together unit. And they even use these shifters, as I showed you in the closer look, in drifting cars and things like that that actually compete. So yeah, I guess that gives it enough street cred right there. Now, the detent balls that they have in here, what they call the ball plunger system, really gives you a good sense for tactile feedback that you're actually actioning something in a gearbox when you're using it. And that's important to me personally. I like to feel something going on, even though there are some sequential shifters out there that just use electric switches and electric solenoids and sometimes air-driven solenoids to change gears in the gearbox. But for me, it just gives me that satisfying click and feel that I've done something. I'm actually turning the selector rod in a sequential gearbox. So some people might not agree with that, that they'd rather have something softer, but I really like the feel of this thing. And it's, again, tough enough that when you're doing the downshifts, you can really bang away on this thing and it just brushes it off. <laughs> Doesn't even break a sweat because it's so well built. Now, the neutral switch up there or reverse switch, whatever you want to call it, uh, that worked fine. Never had a problem with that. Unfortunately, as you may have seen, if you've already watched some of the review, I did have some problems with the read switches, but they sent me some new ones and I was able to install those and get it back up and running and haven't had any problems since as far as using the sequential. They now are no longer using the read switches in their shifters. They'll be using a proper Hall effect sensor integrated circuit unit. And yeah, that's currently in development. But right now this is working fine. I've got a few hours on it. It still hasn't had any more problems. And yeah, this is a fun shifter to use. This is one that if you want something that's a full size control and feels like you're really doing something and you can bang away on it all you want, this is the kind of shifter that you're gonna be looking to get, right? There's only a few of them out there like this, full size controls like this. So a lot of fun, tactile feedback's good. I really can't find too much to complain about as far as the mechanical action. So yeah, the throw is actually longer than any of the other shifters that I've tested here at the SRG from SG Racing. So I think that's another big step in the right direction because the first ones are a little bit short on the throw and I think I discussed that when I was doing the review. And now I think it's really where the sweet spot is. They got it tuned to where it needs to be. And yeah, I really can't complain about much. The only thing obviously I'm gonna complain about is the read switch failure. And you know, other than that though, this is a well-built unit. And yeah, you know, once they get that sorted with the new hall sensors, or you can just go ahead and order one with the micro switches because they're making those obviously, then yeah. It's, I think most people are going to be very happy with this shifter if you are in the market for a sequential shifter. And of course, you can see it's working very well here in the rally situation too, even though I don't have the handbrake with it right now. <laughs> Final thoughts on the Pro Sequential Shifter from the guys at SG Racing. This is the third shifter I have reviewed from SG Racing. It has been evolving since the first one I reviewed, and this is their latest shipping product. There are some things that have not changed from the first two, which I consider to be a good thing. 
it is still made from thick CNC machine 6061 aluminum billet. When these plates are bolted together, it provides a very solid feel in hand. All the bolts are stainless steel. My version has a black anodized finish, which seems to be well done with no obvious defects. It also has some custom options on it, like the engraved SRG logo plate and the black handle, which has a nice grip knurling applied in the machining process. You can order things like custom colors and logos when you buy the shifter. The shifter also has the longest throw of the ones tested at the SRG, which makes it my personal favorite to date. But this is subjective and others may not agree. There's also a ball plunger element in the new shifter. This provides a very good tactile feel when you're using it. Again, a noticeable improvement over the older shifters. The shifter also is sporting a magnet actuated reed switch for shifting and signaling. I would consider this to be a semi-contactless solution. I did have two of the switches malfunction during the SRG review process. While not a user serviceable part, I was able to replace the switches with new ones sent from SG Racing and get it back up and running. I have not had any issues since I made these repairs. Still, not what I would consider an acceptable failure rate. After having some conversations with SG Racing, they've decided to discontinue the use of the reed switches in their shifters, opting for a more robust hall sensor integrated circuit solution, which is already in development. Driving with the shifter was a good experience. The combination of the ball plunger element, a longer throw, and being a full-size control takes you deeper into the simulation of driving a car. The tactile feedback is very good when solidly mounted. You feel like you're actually manipulating a gearbox when making shifts. It is solid enough to withstand a heavy-handed slapping style of shifting. Overall, I think this is the best mechanical version of the SG Racing Shifter to date. I was not impressed by the reed switch failures, but they seem to be addressing this and should have a more reliable solution soon. In the meantime, you can order the shifter with the micro switch solution. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.